Ah, uh, wait, this is Spectator Spider-Man 107 by David Peter and Rich Fulcher. This is the first part of a four-part story that is probably David Peter's best thing. The death of Jessica DeWolf. And in this issue, Spidey cuts loose. Having just covered what were my first Spider-Man back issues, it makes a lot of sense to go here next. Because these were also very early reads for me, albeit not in the single issue format. The first collection I ever got was a little digest sized Marvel Pocket Book is what they were called. They stopped doing those probably because people getting into comics could actually afford them and be willing to pay for them. They were five pounds and the one I had was there was a Spider-Man one called The Origin of Vemon. Or something like that. And it had this story. And the first Todd McFarland Vemon story. This was a very good story to read early on though. Because it is... It's a very good story. I think of all David Peter's work. That this is the story most likely to appeal to people who don't like David Peter. This is a proper story. This isn't just a David Peter story. We open here with an introduction and a recap of the life of Jessica DeWolf. She was a policewoman who occasionally interacted with Spider-Man. The legacy of this story the importance of it, and that I regard for it, creates a false impression that Jessica DeWolf was a lot more prominent a character than she ever was. She was in some Spider-Man team-ups from time to time. That is it. This is establishing for us why she became a cop. And it is because she is already dead, shot and killed. That is the death of Jessica DeWolf right there. Based on the title, the story is over now. I will also explain what the recap actually doesn't, which is Jessica DeWolf's history in comics, rather than a backstory about why she became a police. She was introduced in Spider-Man Team Up 48 by Bill Bungalow. That is her on the cover, actually. She is a no-nonsense, chain-smoking police captain. Her character is actually fairly ahead of its time. It's an inversion on the stereotypical gruff male police captain. She was sympathetic and supportive of Spider-Man and also had a working relationship with Iron Man. Her brother, who is not mentioned anywhere in this story, is a sometimes villain, sometimes hero, called Raph. And that was her introduction. She and her brother also appear as allies to Iron Man in Bill Bungalow's run on Iron Man. And Jessica DeWolf appears infrequently as Spider-Man's cop friend after that. Most notably, she helped Spider-Man get Black Cat pardoned for her past crimes, allowing Black Cat to develop into a hero and a legitimate partner to Spider-Man. Well, now she's dead. 
the mystery of who killed her, uh, or rather why they killed her, uh, or who really killed her, uh, is one of the big hooks for the story. And here is Peter Parker using his camera skills to photograph women without their permission. What happens is one of Aunt Tommy's friends is beaten off by a street gang. And my least favourite thing about this story is that Spider-Man is very dark and very grim. He is affected by all this stuff happening, and that does make sense. But I think the story goes too far with it in places wherein it begins to contradict the core of the character. There is nothing in this issue. My main complaint is really in the final part. There is a bit that I feel is miscalculated by David Peter. It doesn't stop the story from being good. And the payoff to it is nice enough that it softens the problem. But yeah, expect to see a mopey and cold Spider-Man in this one. That is the point of the story, I get it. That Spider-Man is losing his faith and the violent death of his acquaintance and the street crime like this and the serial killer at large. They are all making him very jaded and defeatist. But I think that it goes too far in the story's climax. So now Spider-Man beats off these low-life street rats that would beat off an art man in an alleyway. Which leads to Spider-Man learning about the death of Jessica DeWolf from the arresting policemen. We are introduced to a creepy serial killer seaman dude called Emil Gregg. He has gone to a church to confess to his sins. He is our very obvious suspect. And then we also meet Jessica DeWolf's ex-partner on the force, Stan Carter, who has quite possibly the most generic name possible. It is nice to see Spider-Man interacting with these police people and Stan Carter respecting him and his efforts to tackle crime. Also, Dairy Devil is a major character in this story. In many ways, this is the quintessential Spider-Man and Dairy Devil story. And it was this that made me like their dynamic and their friendship. Although I had, I had already read Spider-Man Team Up 56. I had gotten that back issue for its appearance of Captain Cold from New Thunderballs. In his civilian guys. Dairy Devil is representing, he is defending the street trash who assaulted poor Ad, Mr. Pop Chick earlier. And he is able to get the scum off the hook and released without bail. He is actually a bit conflicted about this afterwards. He knows that he's on the wrong side. But it is his profession. He has to do it. But then, when he is talking to the judge about it, we are properly introduced to our bad guy. It is a vigilante slash serial killer called Cinnamon. I actually love Cinnamon. I think he is a great, realistic criminal for Spider-Man to have to face... He ends up tied to Vemon's origin, 
which is why the story was in that pocketbook I had. Right now, he has come to assassinate this judge for always letting criminals off. And he tries to take out Dairy Devil 2 because he hates lawyers. And it ends with the execution of the judge. And I can see criticism of that end card being a tad ostentatious. But once you've read the story, it earns it. You'll forgive it. As someone who has uneven feelings on David Peter, I strongly recommend this. I do think this is his best story, and part of that is it is one of the least David Peter seeming David Peter stories. The sarcasticness is largely kept to Spider Man's wise kraken, and that works. We have some very intense and mature handling of grief and mental exhaustion. We have a grounded and almost true-to-life killer as the bad guy. I don't know if I would call it the shock of the year like this cover does, because this is the same year Spider-Man taught beyond a man how to use the toilet. But what I will call it is seven thumbs up.